In the grave, my friends, sometimes we think that, okay, inshallah, you know, we're not going to have so much fitna. But look at the description of the people, of the angels that will come to us and, and ask us questions in the grave. The ahadith in Sunan Tirmidhi mentioned that the people, that the two angels that will come, and the ahadith mentioned that their voices are like thunder. And they're completely black, and their eyes are like lightning, and in one hadith, either the eyes are blue, or in another hadith, their eyes are red. And, and when they blink their eyes, it's, it's lightning. And the voice is like thunder. And the complexion is completely black, pitch dark. And this is the, these are the two question, angels that will come and question you. How severe is the test going to be in the grave? Well, listen to this. Do you remember the test of the Dajjal? And so people will start leaving the religion and going and saying the Dajjal is a god. Yes or no? Tremendous fitna, yes? Well, listen to this hadith in Bukhari. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, He said, Uhiya ilayya, it has just been revealed to me now that you will be tested in your graves. Like example or similar to the fitna of the test of the Masih Dajjal. Wallahi, whether we live for the time of the Dajjal or not, we will have a test of the Dajjal that, subhanAllah, that we cannot escape from. So the grave will be a tremendous test for us. My friends, compare your bed in your grave to your bed in your first day that you got married, in the night of your marriage. And in this time, in a couple of weeks back, I had the privilege of being, I was doing a, uh, a, a series in the graveyards of the Muslims, and, and, I, and I was in the only Muslim graveyard in Europe, the gardens of peace. And I had the privilege of actually going into one of the graves. It was a freshly cut grave, and it was still wet. I could hear all the bustles and sounds outside, but as soon as I went into the grave, I could hear nothing. Say, so can you please cover, cover the grave up? I said, I just, I just want to see how it feels. So they put the covering top of the grave. Wallahi, I had the most amazing experience. You're building a house that is two stories. Wallahi, the grave is not even two meters. You're building a house that has seven rooms. By Allah, the grave has only one small place. It's hardly bare, barely big enough for you to lie down. And you're building a bed that is so beautiful. You buy your furniture that is so expensive, Italian furniture. But by Allah, the bed of the earth is, Wallahi, it is wet, it is murky, it is eerie, and it is completely black, pitch black. Completely pitch black. And this is your abode for Allah knows how long. Look at the people who passed away before us. Thousands of years they're still in their graves. Pass by them and think about it. My friends, truly, the grave is the first status of the hereafter. It is for this reason why Uthman radiallahu anhu used to cry when he used to think about the grave and they used to say, why are you crying? Because truly, Qabr is the first state, it's the first dwelling place from the placing of the hereafter. If your place in the Qabr is good, then wallahi, what comes after that will be good. And if your place in the Qabr is bad, what comes after it will be bad. Why? Because in the Qabr you will have an evil man with you or you'll have a good man, good man with you. An evil man, a, a man all in black is an authentic hadith in Bukhari, he is, he is your evil deeds. Or a man completely in white who will, be, who will be your companion in your grave. And that is your good deeds. You will also have a window in your grave that is towards your feet. And the window will be either a window from Jahannam or a window from Jannah. And so you will be able to smell Jannah and you will be able to see the gardens that Allah has put for you in Jannah or you will be able to see the Jahannam and what, what is awaiting you in your grave. Thank <laughs> you.